Okay, guys, you know the drill. Just waiting for a few more people to log on, and then uh, once I do, I'll start talking. At the moment, I'm just uh, setting up what I need to show everyone what I need to show them, and uh, waiting for a few people to check in, check the feed, and join the, join the stream. <clears throat> right, there's my... Uh, that's my GameCube controller vibrating, in case you're wondering. <laughs> so, right. Let's give it a sec. How's it going, Mark? How's it going, Rich? How's it going, everybody else who's joining? I'll give a few more people a chance to log on and then I'll start talking you through this evening's stream. Quite a few of you have played this in the arcade. It is an awesome game. And so is the sequel, which we'll be looking at shortly. So, right, there's a few of you logged on now. I might as well start yakking, haven't I? I'll just set this up somewhere where you can see me. Get my ugly mug for a little while. There we go, guys. You know, I like to do this ghetto style, so you just have to deal with me adjusting stuff every so often. And uh, turn the volume down on that for a second. Right, so anyway, hello, good evening, and welcome to another Yam Yam Retro Gaming live stream. Um, for anybody who's checking in, most of you know me, some of you are logging on, I can see a few names appearing who haven't seen these streams before. Um, I'm not like the other streamers on here. I don't like to sit there and just do you a live feed of my screen and show you exactly what I'm playing and bore you to death with that. I'd rather talk to you a little bit more in depth about the kind of uh, kind of things that I'm looking at. And uh, you're gonna get warts and all. How's it going, Aaron? You all right? Ah, well, there you go, Mark. You'll find out in a minute if you, if you stay tuned. I'm just gonna have to move my GameCube controller because Right now it's vibrating the hell out of my uh, of my table. In fact, I'll quickly knock that off for a second and we'll come back to it in a few minutes. Right. Okay, so. So this evening, guys, um, obviously you've seen the, uh, the preview pictures I was doing. You saw the pictures I put up yesterday. Uh, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about uh, the Nintendo Wii. Uh, and what exactly I've done with mine, what you can do with yours, and I'm going to try and talk you through how you go about doing this yourself. So, um, well, basically, um, what I've done is um, the, the good old Nintendo Wii. I've been talking a lot recently about doing, you know, f uh, about flash carts, about ever drives, about flash solutions for a lot of systems. How's it going, Gary? You're right. How am I? Exactly. Um, and um, I've been talking about flash solutions for disk-based systems, and uh, one of the ones out there, you know, is um, obviously the Nintendo Wii. Now, the Wii is not that older system. It's not going to be suffering from the major breakdowns that the older CD systems are going to be suffering from. At this point, it's not going to be having major drive failures. It's, it's got questionable build quality, and depending on which revision you had, it can be good or bad. But uh, generally, the disk drives aren't failing too much. However... As everyone knows today, convenience is everything and lugging your discs about everywhere can be a bit of a pain. Um, so, I mean, there are a lot of great titles for the Wii. The Wii itself was very underappreciated from the seventh, gen seventh generation of gaming. You know, it was the biggest seller. Nintendo tried to do something different and there are loads of brilliant games on there. If you, um, if you really persevere, yes, it had, it had probably a disproportionate amount of shovelware compared to pretty much every other console out there. But um, it's not nowhere near as bad as people make it out to be. And there's still some top, top titles on there. So, you know, breaking it out at certain occasions is certainly justified. You know, there's no other console out there, I don't think, that's got quite got the party 
elements that the Wii has got. You know, it was designed for multiplayer gaming. It's got some great casual games. It's got some great, you know, in-depth games. And, um, you know, it, it was very much a world apart from the Xbox 360 and the PS3. So, <laughs> yeah, Just Dance is probably no, probably the high point, Jeremy. But, um, you know, for, if that's your kind of thing, you know, rhythm games were popular. You know, DDR was popular. You know, there's a load of rhythm games there on the Wii. There's a load of rhythm games came before it on the GameCube. It doesn't make it a bad system. Just because that stuff is there, there's something for everybody. You know, there was still other games on there. There was still, you know, some first-person shooters. There was still, you know, a lot of... Um, there was some good arcade shooters. There's some good adventure games, some good RPGs, good platformers, um, space shooters, puzzle games, you know. There's, there's all kinds of games for the system. And so, you know, people are wanting to... You know, do more. You know, do more with their system. At the end of the day, you can pick up a Wii now for what twenty quid. You go on eBay. There were that many sold. You know, like the PS One. They're ten a penny now. You can get them dirt cheap. Most of you probably got one kicking about in the loft. Might have bought one as a, as a party piece. You know, something to to break out in the family's round and break out Wii Sports. You know, I still maintain there's no better game for multiplayer than Wii Sports. How's it going, Tony? You all right? And um, you know, it's it just kind of gone to waste since then because you've moved on to your new platform and you don't tend to have more than one console out at once unless you're a serious collector, you know, and you've got your retro stuff set out. And um, I think it's a shame because the, the Wii is a fantastic system. Now, um, going back to the whole flash solution thing I was talking about, the Wii has had its own flash solution for quite some time. Um, very early into its existence, uh, mod chips appeared and uh, I actually bought mine um, brand new back in 2007, I think it was. I think it had been out about a year over here uh, uh, at that point. And um, I, um, I bought mine mod chipped. Well, so I bought it and then I sent it off for mod, chip mod chipping before I even played it straight away. Because I wanted to open up and, and play, you know, foreign games and stuff as well. It is one of those systems, strangely, I do happen to have a lot of you know international games for i do happen to have quite an extensive uk collection for but uh, those kind of games i don't like to take out with me to events and stuff taking cd games around you know it's easy for them to get scratched up for them to get lost and uh, you know even more, even though cartridges can be quite valuable discs tend to be a bit more flimsy and i don't like to leave them lying around so i do own a lot of the originals for this system and i've still got them from new but they stay upstairs, you know, they stay in storage where, where they've been. And uh, I, I knew there had to be a better solution when it comes to going to events and things like that. So, um, yeah, so what I did, I mean, a couple of years ago, um, even though it was chipped and even though you could play, you know, copied games on it, you know, we're not going to go into the whole ins and outs of the legalities, you know, of, of wrongs and that. I've covered it a million times before. I noticed there were a couple of frowns on when I actually posted this video up and it's like, Listen, you, you've got to get out of yourself. Emulation is out there, you know. ROMs are available everywhere. Everybody is doing it. Does it make it right? No, but at the end of the day, the methods for doing this do allow you to legally take your own copies of your own games, and uh, that's perfect within most, most laws, so deal with it at the end of the day. So, yeah, a couple of years ago, um, I wanted to kind of move on from just, just using, you know, my standard discs and uh, make it more event friendly once I stopped using it at home. So I uh, took some steps and you can actually set up your system to uh, install Homebrew uh, applications on the, uh, on the Wii channels and to be able to run all kinds of things from you know, various emulators to install uh, WiiWare and things like that and to, to mess around with your menu and things like that. One of the best things though you could do was you could install a program called uh, USB Loader GX. There are actually two or three um, USB loaders. Um, and what that enabled you to do was to take something like this, which is a couple of years old now. It's a three and a half inch external hard drive enclosure. Um, and it allowed you to plug this in via USB and to be able to put all your games, rip all your games to the hard drive and run them from the front end system. Now, that's all well and good, but the problem is, is that obviously, um, when you come to set things up at events, you've got to think about how much you're carrying around, you've got to think about how inconvenient even that can be, you know. 
And uh, this weighs a fair bit, and obviously hard drives don't take too kindly to being moved around a lot, even when you're using the best enclosures and things like that. Um, turn it on and off. I did corrupt a few hard drives this way, so you know it's not the best one. I'll be honest. I could have got a better one, but it served its purpose, you know. And I could always reinstall it any time I wanted to. Anyway, I had most of the discs that I put on there anyway, so it was easy enough to do. But again, it's just something else you've got to have. It's own external power supply. So you're taking up another plug. And anybody who's ever done events with me will tell you what the what the uh, necessity is to have enough available plugs are, and you tend to allocate two per system. Well, with this, you had to allocate three because you had the the Wii system, you got your TV or your monitor, and then you've got this thing as well. So it kind of throws the balance off when you're running four gang plug banks in series down a room. So rather annoying. So anyway, I thought I, I did this many years ago, and I managed to put quite a few good games on here. Um, but things have come a long way, and I mean, you've got to bear in mind this was probably about eight years ago I did this, and um, it's it's it, you know things have come a long way in that time. I think in two thousand and nine this actually started. I did this in about two thousand and ten, uh, and I was still using my Wii at the time at home. But I always felt this was a little bit inelegant, and a few times I've had this knocked off tables and things like that. It's not doing the hard drive any good. It's not doing the Wii any good. And uh, as a permanent solution, it, it, it wasn't ideal. So uh, I went back to the drawing board and I decided to look again recently while I was looking at flash solutions. I wanted to talk to you, obviously, about other um, flash devices that was up. How's it going, Dave? How's it going, Derek? You all right? And, um, you know, I uh, I thought, well, let, let's revisit the Wii. Let's see what's happened. It does, it does do you good every so often to go back and look... Uh, to, to, to look at what's going on in the world of emulation and flash devices to see if anything's changed, anything's been updated or anything new can be done. And um, I was quite surprised. I was looking at this about 12 months ago and I thought, well, maybe now is the time to kind of go back, check out the Wii and that, but I was too busy at the time. And I've recently gone back in because a lot has changed. And um, one of the main things I wanted to do was go from using this to using this so uh, initially the support for the USB loaders would only support um, US ex external powered USB drives um, you could actually use two and a half inch drives um, but the the Wii struggles to deliver enough power through the USB ports to support it um, external powered was the way to go and the compatibility rate was quite low uh, a lot of hard drives wouldn't work at the time uh, and initially, it w well, it wasn't advised that you use USB flash drives. Um, and at the time, you know, we're going back eight years here, flash capacity and price and everything has come down a lot in the last decade, let's face it. And uh, the size I've got here is just, it was unheard of, you know, eight years ago. This here is a 256 gigabyte USB 3.0 flash drive. Um, it's probably the, about the cheapest one you can get that's reliable. Um, and uh, But the price of this is what you would have paid eight years ago for, I don't know, probably a 16 or a 8 gigabyte or 16 gigabyte flash drive uh, from a shop. So the capacity is a lot different. So I thought, well, maybe we can shrink this down a bit. Maybe we can do something and, and you know, work it to that. So I started looking and um, a friend had his uh, Wii come in as well. And he said he wanted to kind of have something for his family to do. So I says, well, let's look back into it and see what we can do. And I recently discovered not only has modifying your Wii become super simple, as it is with a lot of older consoles, you know, once I kind of go from the current generation and move on, it becomes so much easier. People really start digging them because the developers don't care anymore. And people really start digging into the operating systems, finding the exploits and finding all kinds of ways to run, um, you know, unsigned code on there. And uh, the Wii is now different, you know, since it's kind of moved on, uh, a lot of the online Wii services now have gone offline. There's no Nintendo service for the Wii anymore. Um, so you can go online, but you can't go through Nintendo anymore. So all the online services like the news channel and the weather, weather channel and all that, it's all gone. All the sharing, all the, um, all the networking things that they introduced, they've all gone now. So... It's a good time really because there's been no system updates now for a good few years. It's a good time to bring everyone up to date and upgrade your Wii's and do something useful with it. 
that 20 quid that 20 quid piece of crap you think is rotten in your loft can put to really good use and i'm going to show you exactly what i've done now so i'm going to flip the camera around and i'm going to talk to you a little bit more about how this is set up um no we didn't jeremy we didn't lose our online content anything bought online but the ability to play online i think has now gone because it had to go through Nintendo's network. There were only a few games that supported online play anyway. Um, and uh, the uh, the Nintendo shop and everything is all now defunct. So, right, so I'm gonna show you what we've got here. So, loading up my Wii now, I've got, um, I've got my memory card there plugged in at the back and you'll see that it's plugged into the lower USB port, that's important. Um, sorry, I went a bit funny there. And then in the front, I've got a, I think it's a 256 megabyte SD card in there. The Wii can only accept up to, I think it can only accept up to a two gigabyte SD. I don't think it's supported SDHC. I think there's a few hacks you can put on there to allow it to, uh, to allow it to accept bigger memory cards. But as far as I'm aware, um, it only accepts up to two gigabytes. So that's what I've, I've got. A, I've only got a 256 megabyte card in there because at the end of the day, it's only really for game saves uh, and a few extra files needed for this. So the, what we've got set up here is um, from the off, you'll turn your Wii on now and you'll be presented with this screen. You've got your standard disk loading channel there. Obviously, I've got no disk installed at the moment. Uh, they've got the me channel you can still create your me's the photo channel pointless the Wii shop now defunct all of these here are defunct i can remove those if i want to but i'm not going to because it's, it's just more effort than it's worth uh, there you go sdhd was accepted with updates with certain games uh, the Wii disc as standard jeremy was a dvd so it was 4.7 gigabyte uh, but there were certain dual layer games. Um, I can't think of, there was only a couple for the Wii, but the one that sticks out in my mind is Super Smash Brothers Brawl. That was a dual layer disc, and I think that told nine gigabytes. So, you know, that was probably the largest one on there. But most of the games, you know, were kind of, we were getting to the point where games were looking good and didn't need massive amount of storage because of the way they compressed everything. And the actual game data on most of the uh, discs was only one or two gigabytes. A lot of it was filled with kind of padded out with certain data. So, um, but I'll go into that in a bit more in a minute. So what I've installed in here custom is the homebrew channel, which is the key to basically opening up your Wii and doing all kinds of funky things with it and USB loaded GX. So um, what they do, the homebrew channel uh, executes a certain piece of code, which allows you then to inject other pieces of code and load those up from a menu from things that are installed on your memory card there's a few things on here i'm going to talk through in a minute but you can see there's a few tools here which are very handy for when you're hacking your Wii and want to do certain things with it um, i'll go through a few of them in detail in a few minutes but you just click on what you want and it will then open that program up um, but i don't need to do anything in there just yet so I'll go back to the system menu. The important thing I want to show you for this and what obviously a lot of you want to do, is, like I say, it's been around a few years. For, for some of this is nothing new, but a lot of you probably know about it and have never done it. This is USB Loader GX. Now this is the program I use because this is, was the first one that I use and I find it the most user friendly. So if we hit start on this, what it will do is it will actually um, it will read the data for the application from the SD card in the front and then it will load the program but then it will actually read the data that is loaded onto the memory card that's plugged into the back in order to populate the, the menu that you're going to see now. So it comes on and straight away you're presented with this uh, nice funky menu and you can do a few things in here. Uh, you've got all your games that you've ripped to your drive on the front here. Um, I'll talk about those in a few minutes. So mainly it's for ripping your Wii games. So see I've got things on here. As I was talking about earlier, there's something on here for everybody because it depends on the event, depends on what I'm doing at home. But, um, you know, the girls like to play on things like the dance games, you know, whereas, you know, 
the more you know the more discerning game might want to blast a golden eye or something like that. Uh, we've got to be a big brain academy, bomb man land, carnival games, uh, cooking mama. Got a couple more dancing games there. The excellent Donkey Kong games, um, the uh, fitness games, Excite Truck, brilliant little racing game there. If you've never played that, I recommend you try it out because it really is a, a cool. I mean, it's the kind of thing you probably find now on a phone, to be quite honest. But it is a real fast-paced racing game, and it's good fun to play. Uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Uh, I do like my arcade shooters, so we've got uh, Ghost Squad on here. Um, the Ghostbusters video game. Really, the script for that should have been made into the third Ghostbusters film. But we all know how that turned out, so let's not go into it. Uh, got a couple of survival horror games on here. Uh, the Grudge is actually quite a good game to play in the dark with the sound turned up. Uh, there's the Just Dance games, just for you, Jeremy. <laughs> they are on here, of course. Um, got the Lego games, you know, the Mario and Sonic at the Olympics, Mario Kart Wii, uh, Mario Party games. Now, up until recently, all I had available were the Wii games, and that was because... That was all I knew how to do, and they've added extra, you know, support for things over the years. You are always able to play GameCube games on a Wii, because very much like some of the backwards compatible systems in the past, uh, such as the Mega Drive, uh, such as oh, I'm trying try to think of some other examples. Well, basically, um, the Wii itself is actually a glorified GameCube. Um, somebody derogatory said before that the Wii is just two GameCubes stuck together in a different box. Well, that is pretty much... It's a crude term to put it, but it is... Uh, technically speaking, it's not that far above a GameCube. So, um, um, I think it might do, Kevin. I'll, I'll go into that shortly. Um so yeah, so to start with, I had Wii games running, but of course it does run GameCube games, and it does mean that some of the software that was made to exploit uh, things like the SD Gecko on the GameCube, which allows you to play copy games through an SD card, or to play copy games on a GameCube, some of those exploits actually work on here, because the hardware is not too dissimilar. It's also why, for you emulator fans out there, uh, why the Dolphin emulator came about the way it did because they were actually looking into to emulating GameCube to start with, realised how similar the Wii was, so started developing it for the Wii and then GameCube kind of came as a result of that, if you know what I mean. So uh, the Dolphin emulator proves how close the hardware is because the performance difference between Wii games and GameCube games isn't that different uh, on your PC specs, it shows that they're not any more demanding than the other. So originally, I, I had you know I had my hard drive loaded up, and I had all Wii games on here. And uh, all you do from there is when you want to play a game, you, there's a few different ways you can display them on there. You've got a few options at here. You can have this kind of this kind of graphical look here where it pans across. You can have uh, this. This is a new look that's been introduced. Which puts it into kind of the the um, the channel to like system like you see on the the home screen for the Wii. I'm not actually a big fan of that because it, it's kind of hard with these scrolling banners to see at a glance what games are on there. Uh, and then you've got this this simple graphical style um, menu here where you just got simple picture at the side, and then you've got your games list going down here. Um, you can also sort for the different you can different ways you can sort it by you can mark your favorites and sort it that way you can mark how often they're played and sort it that way sort them by multiplayer games or just sort them alphabetically which is the best way to go for the most part you can search for games if you want to you should never really need to do that you're not going to have enough on here to justify doing things like that um and then you can actually choose to display what you want to display you can display your other wii channels on here you can display your wii games and they added support thankfully in time for gamecube games when i initially did this you weren't able to display gamecube games on the same list as the wii games and now you can they added that in a few years ago i just never bothered doing it because i didn't see it necessary but there's a very good reason why i've done it now 
So, um, yeah, I, I like this style. I like this kind of wheel style. Not that I'm a big fan of anything like hyperspin, but I do like this this wheel fashion that's going on here. And you can add any kind of artwork you want, um, but I, I just like to stick with the kind of covers. It's, it's nice and easy to view. You get the text come up at the bottom of what the actual title of the game is. Uh, you can display how much space is left. You can jump straight to the homebrew channel. You can jump to the Wii settings. You can power off. You can do SD card management and everything. All from here. Uh, you can even load your discs and rip your discs directly onto here. So um, it's quite handy if you've got your originals and you want to put a, a good quality clean rip on your hard drive. You can just put your disc in, click that. It will load your disc and it will rip it straight to the drive. So once you've got all this, all you need to do from this menu, um, I was trying to show you, is you just click on your game there. You get this little image of the spinning disc. You can actually change that as well. You can change that to uh, to display like the, the normal loading window, but I prefer it this way. It just looks nice. Uh, and from here, you can change the way it displays in terms of the the resolution. You can change that. You can patch the game for different regions. You can patch it to going 60 hertz. You can change the aspect ratio. You can even use Ocarina. Now Ocarina was, a, I think it was some kind of cheat device or cheat language for the GameCube. Well, the same thing applies to Wii games. So you can actually download cheat files and apply them to your games and load your games with cheats, which is quite cool. You can add your games into categories, sort them out however you want to. And uh, there's a few different things you can do. You can uninstall it and whatever. But yeah, you just click on the center there and it'll load the game up from the uh, hard drive. Obviously a lot faster than disk loading, a lot more reliable in theory. And uh, once you get into the game, everything like your FMV and everything will be smoother. Just like anything, if you've got a failing hard drive, or sorry, failing disk drive, you're gonna struggle in terms of the um, FMV and uh, music clipping and things like that. So, you know, thankfully you can do away with all that. So, you know, you get in, the game plays just as normal. Uh, I do love the remake of NBA Jam, by the way. If you've never played it, I recommend that you do. Um, but yeah, we can just jump back. And the way I've set mine up, if I hit reset, it will reset the game. But if I hit Wii menu, rather than go right back to the Wii menu and have to reload everything again, if I hit Wii menu now from here, it will go straight back into USB loader. the Wii drives do fail. Yeah, I'm sure they do, Dave. I'm sure they do, yeah. That's from me. I've not had it happen to mine, thankfully. But uh, I have heard tales of people where their disk drives died pretty early on. So it's it's good when you start moving it over to solid state. So let's give it a second. It'll allow my menu back up. So like I say, originally I only had Wii games. Now, um, from there, um, they added GameCube support and they made it so you can add your GameCube games to this list How's it going, Jace? You're all right, mate. And um, you can add your games to this list, but what it does is it, it will launch the games uh, and it will kind of interface with it, but it actually uses a third-party app. Uh, and there's, there's several third-party apps that will actually launch GameCube games, but uh, the one that we're going to be using is called Nintendo. And the reason I'm using that, and if I just jump in here, you'll see it's the same story. It comes up with your disc. You can still do funky things with the settings. You can add cheats and everything. Um, but you can just jump straight into a game exactly the same way. Obviously, of course, with it being on the Wii, you've got your GameCube ports on the front. You can see it there, it's using the Nintendo and Loader. It only does that once. Um, because what it actually does, it creates a virtual memory card. So you don't actually need to have physical memory cards plugged in for each of your games. And I find that really handy too. Uh, but you do need a Wii controller, uh, sorry, GameCube controller plugged in to be able to play these. And uh, choose to allow that in 60 hertz. It should display just fine. Yeah, it's on auto setup. So, so that's coming through in 60 hertz. I can't remember what game I loaded now. What was it? Oh, Paper Mario. There we go. And that runs just fine. That's what I mean, Jeremy. See that they're all going to fail eventually. You know what I mean? 
So yeah, so you can see here, even though I don't have a, I don't actually have a memory card plugged into the front of my system there. It's created a virtual memory card, it's detected the memory card, and it'll create a save file. So you don't need to carry physical memory cards about, because that's something that really bugs me with these systems. Uh, you can manage your save files outside of the program, so if you want to move them around, you can. So it's quite handy. Exactly, Derek, they're cheap enough to get, so if you want, want to go we now, it's easy enough to do. So, but anyway, we're going to, uh, we're going to go back to the menu from there. Unfortunately, with it being a GameCube game, you do have to reset to go back. I think there is actually a, um, a soft shortcut you can do. You press a certain combination of buttons on the control pad and it will reset it. But um, I don't know what that is and I haven't experimented enough with that. But I'll check what that, what that is anyway. But we're going to go back in now. And um, the reason I want to use Nintendo Don't with my system rather than the other loaders i think there's one called devolution there's another one i can't remember what it's called but the reason you don't want to use those for loading your gamecube is because nintendo has ha actually had um a branch of uh, a certain emulator worked into it now to allow not only gamecube games but as you saw at the start of this video and i'll just pan around my wheel Go to the start. There we go. It's now added support for these, which are the Triforce um, Nintendo Sega Namco arcade hardware standard. They've added support for this. And the reason they've been able to add support for this is because uh, it was actually done with a Dolphin emulator on the PC. And... Um, what they did is they realized well that basically the arcade hardware for Triforce is essentially identical to that of the GameCube. So besides the fact that it because it was obviously teamed up with Namco and with Sega, the way they kind of did it is it's actually um the, the arcade hardware for Triforce is actually a GameCube motherboard with uh, in and out added to load games from a, a Sega G D ROM, so it's kind of a kind of franking machine really but it also accepts rom carts as well and some games were released on rom carts some games were released on on uh, gd rom now um unfortunately it wasn't it was a time when arcades were dying and there are only literally a few games that were released as proper as we would know arcade games rather than um the shit that you see in arcades now and unfortunately the triforce arcade Hardware was used to run things like Nintendo licensed redemption machines. There was a, a weird banana coin pusher themed by Donkey Kong in Japan that used it. There was a sticker machine. There was all kinds of weird things. But there were a few games that utilised it. And these few games, thankfully, over the years, people have taken the arcade uh, games. They've reworked and re-injected the code that was needed. And they, they made them backwards compatible made them compatible with the emulators and now they've basically coded them to be one-to-one -one compatible with GameCube hardware. So what that means is, in theory, if you have a chipped GameCube, you should, in theory, with the right software, be able to, load, to burn a disc with the arcade games on and play them on your GameCube. And of course, that means with this, where everything's done from a flash solution, it means we can put the games onto the flash solution, we can use the hat uh, software, and we can actually now load several top arcade games on here. Now the four games I've added onto my system, uh, no Jace, I'll come on to that in a minute, mine, mine is actually chipped, um, and I actually did my original uh, hack on this using uh, a disc with the, the, the needed software on there. But what I've been doing recently is I've been looking back at the soft mod and seeing how easy it is. And I did that to a friend's system a short while ago. And I'm going to talk everyone through that in a minute. Um, but yeah, what everyone really wanted to see and what everyone was, didn't realise, I didn't realise till recently, is that the uh, the Triforce Arcade games will now run on the Wii. And because, uh, unlike the emulator, which is imperfect anyway, because this is pretty much nearly one-to-one -one GameCube bang on and because the Wii's well slightly more advanced than the GameCube these games run as perfect as they do in the arcades and the four games that I've added are 
we have go back to we have Virtual Striker uh, version two thousand and two, which is otherwise known as uh, Virtual Striker three, and was ported to the GameCube. We've got F Zero AX. Uh, AX was actually ported to uh, get to GameCube uh, in a game called F Zero GX, and there is kind of hacks of the arcade version still left on the disc you can access but they use different physics to the arcade game so they work and the two best games are mario kart arcade gp1 and mario kart arcade gp2 and um yeah those games if you ever play those in the arcade games those are two of the best you know the arcade mario kart games they feel a lot different to the home games but they are brilliant, brilliant games, and they play great on here. They worked, they work perfectly with the GameCube controller. Rumble support is even featured. There are software shortcuts which allow you to get into the dip switch menu, so you can alter the difficulty and things like that. And uh, I'll show you them running in a second. I'm just going to check these uh, questions here first. Can the Triforce games use multi Wii setup? Uh, no, unfortunately not, Kev. At the moment, I think they're probably going to be a way to do it, uh, but uh, in theory, they would have used standard uh, Cat5 networking, I think, to link the machines. So unless someone knows how to emulate that, and there's probably people out there who know how to do it, but nobody has yet done it. And in theory, you could use a Wii LAN adapter and uh, you know link together two Wiis to, to have like a link game going. Um, I'd love to do it if, if we could, but unfortunately you can't. And if you burn them to GameCube, from what I understand, you can't use the um, the GameCube network cable because the protocol is slightly different. We're going to fire it up. Everyone's been waiting to see just how they run. So let's start with the big one. Let's go with Mario Kart Arcade GP. <coughs> and like I say, rumble support is added, which is really cool that they've managed to add that in as well. So... See it switch over to NTSC there, because obviously it would have been 60 hertz in the arcades. Bring it back in focus. Sorry on the piss there, guys. Sorry. And we hit A, and in we go. You can actually use, well, you can create a virtual Mario card on here, but it does cause slight problems when you um, when you try and uh, quit during a race. So I'm not going to do that at the moment, but you can create a virtual save card and it will save your games and everything. I'll check it out in a second, Mark. You say about handling it, technically, this is the same system as the arcade hardware, so in theory... It should be mint. I've not tried that particular level, but I'll give it a check in a sec. Uh, no, I don't want to make a Mario card. And then from here, you can select your character. What I like about the arcade version is, is you've got a few extra characters never seen in the home versions. Uh, Pac-Man, I always, I always like being when I play the arcade version, or Miss Pac-Man. And then the rest of pretty standard fare for the, the series so we'll, we'll jump in as Batman because he's a bit different obviously on the arcade you could take a picture of your face and then you, you would actually show your face in the corner while you're racing uh, you get a little avatar whenever you get hit by a weapon and we'll go on Grand Prix and I'll, sh I'll show Mario Kart Mario uh, the Mario Cup first, just to show it's all work, and then we'll see if we can get to Luigi's Ghost House. And I'm trying to remember, I think the controls are mapped to the shoulder buttons because they're analog for your acceleration and your braking. Could be wrong. Yes, it is. So R is to accelerate, L is to brake. Um, you can also handbrake. Uh, you can hop. And pressing 
why it launches your weapon. Like I say, the arcade GP, unlike the home one, has got much wider courses. It's more of a bona fide racing game, and because they need to make it harder for the arcades, there's no super cheap weapons on there, at least, well, not that you can use. It seems like the, uh, the computer control characters can certainly use cheap weapons, but as you can see, because this is, you know, the hacks, the hack that they've done from the arcade game has improved over the years. And because this is genuine GameCube hardware inside, the game runs pretty much perfectly. There's no major glitches. It's running at full speed from what I can tell. I think when you, if you actually use this hack through the Wii U, uh, I think you can actually get HDMI output on it as well, give it a slightly better picture. I'm going over the rumble strips there and the rumble on my joypad's actually working which is cool. So we can get a decent finish here. Oh just missed oh one lap left. I was gonna say I just missed out on first. I'm in first now, see how long I can hang on to it for. Can't drop weapons behind you like you can on the home version because obviously on the arcade there's no way to press down to do that. You can power slide using the hot button, but uh, I'm not doing that. I'm just trying to hang on for dear life here. I say, a lot of you out there have actually played this in the arcade. If you haven't, and there is an arcade near you that's got this or you're on holiday, never pass up an opportunity because it's really good fun. And most of the ones you'll see will be at least two player system linked, more than likely four player linked. Yeah, it upscales it. I think there is a steering wheel for the Wii uh, and the GameCube, Dave. So if there's a GameCube steering wheel, it should, in theory, uh, work with this. And it asks me when I carry on, but I'm going to hit no because I just want to go back to the title screen. Somebody there asked about if, if a certain level would work. Was it Luigi's Mansion? Luigi's Mansion stage. Definitely an underrated system, Jason. Definitely. Luigi's Mansion. Oh, Luigi's Go. Oh, is that what you're talking about, Mark? Luigi's Ghost Mansion, the arcade game. No. Luigi's Mansion, the arcade game, is, is a dedicated arcade game. Uh, only released in the last couple of years. That uses much, much newer hardware. And uh, obviously custom made for the guns that was there. This was made in like 2005, you know, we're going back a few years there. Definitely, Jeremy, we will, um, you say should have, we've got plenty of opportunities to do so, mate. Uh, at Revival next month, I will, I'm actually doing an event this weekend and I'm going to put these out, I'm going to put this out with Mario Kart GP on because a lot of people have never played it and to play it this way is absolutely awesome. Way better than trying to play on an emulator for your PC, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, and, and you know, it's, it's just cool to be able to play this. Uh, and I'm going to jump back and just quickly show you a couple of the other... Um, I'll show you a couple of the other um, Triforce games then, and then I'll start talking you through exactly how we go about doing this if you want to do it yourself. Like I say, the game runs perfectly, you can't fault it. And this is exactly why, you know, I wanted to upgrade my system now by... Well, the, the timing was right. It means I've now been able to move to a USB device. It means I've been able to update all the necessary files that are on here. And adding in the Triforce Arcade games, you know, that's just awesome, you know. Exactly, Dave. That's why I said you should watch this video, mate. you got so many Wii's there doing nothing. Do something useful with them. You know, using uh, the Homebrew channel, using the, the Hack or the Soft Mod, you can install all kinds of emulators on there. Personally, I like to keep a system just for the games it was intended for, and uh, that's why I've stuck with this. Um, now, um, from here, one thing I should just quickly mention, when it comes, uh, you just come with, like, it comes with like plain folders here. You don't actually get all the artwork by default, but what you do is once you've added a game in, if you press number one on your remote, you can then go to cover download. What it will do is it will connect to the website 
as long as you're connected to the internet, it will connect to the website that created this. And on there, people have user created loads of art for the discs, the banners, everything like that. One thing you won't get that one I'm quite proud of is that you won't be able to get these. These will just come up as blank. And um, I've actually created these images in Photoshop yesterday as ping images. That's why they've got a transparency layer there and you can see through it. Uh, I created those images because I thought it was very fitting that you've got, you know, the Wii covers instantly recognisable, the GameCube covers instantly recognisable. And I thought, well, we need a standard for the arcade. So I've just dropped in the Triforce logo and uh, then obviously the arcade machine that it is. Even though the title of the game is not that clear on there, it does display at the bottom when you're in this viewing mode. So you can see there it says Virtual Striker 3 2002 underneath. Uh, and those games are pretty obvious what they are, so I'm happy with that. So this is F-Zero AX. I'll just quickly jump into this and show you. Oh, and by the way, that disc image is actually of what the uh, Triforce Arcade GD-ROM discs looked like. You would have that and you would have a security key which, which allowed you to use the game with your uh, Triforce Arcade hardware. So it was very much like a GameCube inside. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Jeremy, you're after if you're after a new Wii and yours is knackered, Dave's got 10. <laughs> it's a great game, Kev. I know you love your Nintendo, Kev, as well, so this is right up your alley. Uh, yeah, you're talking about Luigi's, Man uh, Luigi's Mansion, yeah. It's a pretty good game, Mark. I wasn't as impressed with it as I could have been, but, um, you know, it was okay. Oh, this is the, the loading BIOS screen for this. You always get this because it likes to calibrate the controls and everything. So it'll skip past that in a few seconds, so give it a minute. There we go. Yep, yeah, F-Zero AX. Uh, yes, you can, Dave. You can have it auto-boot into um, USB Loader GX. I prefer not to do that because if you ever get a problem with it, as I've seen before, it can be a little bit tricky to kind of go back to the menu and correct things. So I just have it that it resets the game back into the loader but doesn't auto-boot into the loader. Uh, either way, you would need the, um, you would need the uh, Wii Remote to be able to skip past the opening screen where it gives you the prompt which says press A to continue anyway so there's no real way to get by having to use the Wii Remote sadly you got rid of your Wii when you upgrade to Wii U Kev you don't need to have a normal Wii I was coming on to that you can actually do the soft mod with the Wii U now and you can run this exact same software on the Wii U, why? Because the Wii U is just an upgraded Wii and a Wii was just an upgraded GameCube. So you can actually run everything I'm running here the same way and do it on your Wii U and you will get HDMI output. You've got a few of the obscure Wii guys. I've got quite a few myself, Jeremy, yeah. Thanks, Dave. Smart looking pings, yeah. I've I've done, I've done I've done quite well with them and I've correctly sized them and everything. Um, yeah, I think you can, Kev, as long as you've got the unlike hacking the um, the 3DS or the uh, the Switch, uh, you you can actually download some of the actual channel data and you can install the proper like Castlevania channel uh, on here. That those are out there somewhere. You'd have to find where to download them. I've not really gone into that because it's not really my kind of alley, but. Yeah, you can actually do that now. World of Goo. I'm not sure, Jeremy, but like, like I was just saying to Kevin, in theory, you can actually download those games that were from the Wii Shop. You can't download them from the Wii Shop anymore, but you can download the images online and using the Homebrew channel, there are ways to install those on as their own dedicated Wii channel. If you do get rid of your Wii, of your Wii U, Dave, I might buy it because I haven't got one. I'd like to add it to my system. Wireless sensor bars. Yeah, I, I have got a wireless sensor bar, Jeremy, as it happens. Uh, unfortunately, twice, uh, the batteries have melted it while I've been uh, while I've been using it. So I tend not to use it now. At the end of the day, fishing for batteries all the time is a pain. But I have done it for the sake of using a projector. But you say that... I mean, I, the the cable is so long from the you know from the Wii, um, the Wii sensor bar. But you can see the sensor bar there. 
there's tons rolled up there and still some behind the telly. It does actually stretch about 10 feet. So if you're using a projector, you're plenty set up anyway. So anyway, uh, F0AX, like I say, a little bit different to F0GX. Um, you're presented with different menus. The mechanics are different. It's made slightly harder. It's got different tracks on here, but you can actually take saves from um, a GameCube version of GX and transfer them to this. Not quite sure how you do that just yet, but if you've got all the tracks opened up on GX, you can actually transfer them over to this. As you could in the arcade, you could take your GameCube memory card and plug them into the arcade machine and play your tracks on the arcade machine. You can do it on the, you can do it with this as well, but I'm not quite sure how you do that. I've not gone that, that far into it yet. Got to be the Blue Falcon, obviously. With Captain Falcon! Always loved F-Zero. All of the F-Zero games are a good blast. I think I still prefer the SNES one of all of them, but uh, yeah, this is a really cool game. Yeah, you've got no spin mechanic to get you out of trouble like you've got on the uh, GameCube. Uh, you also can't do um, a snaking slide to boost your speed like you could on the uh, GameCube, but there is actually another way of artificially increasing your speed beyond your normal boundaries. I'm not sure what that is. I've not played this game that much. but And like I say, you can see the pace is fully there. The draw distance is there. There's no glitches. This is an awesome game to play like this. I know technically you can play very similar on the GameCube, but that would be like saying playing Street Fighter 2 on the SNES is the same as the arcade. It's just not. And if you've ever played this on the arcade and realised how rapid and fast paced it is, it uh, feels very different to the uh, the actual GameCube game. The way the enemies behave is different, the mechanics are different, the ships have slightly different handling designed obviously to be controlled with uh, arcade uh, analog controls. The speed is just mental on this game. But I do love F-Zero, I do like this game as well. Not played it that much in the arcade because obviously the arcade had a big deluxe cabinet, a big uh, massive thing. And most ones I've been to, it's like two, two or three quid a go, which is ridiculous. But uh, yeah, I've played, I've, I've played it a few times and uh, big fan. I like any kind of space racing games like this. I remember being pulled to the PS1 because of Wipeout, but honestly, F Zero is these days obviously much faster. Much slicker game. I wish they would do a new one. If they could do a new F Zero for the Switch, I think it'd be brilliant. Some of you out there might already know about it. They might be they might be making a new one. I just don't know about it. Um, at the start, it would usually have asked me if I wanted to create a save card for this as well. Um, because I don't want people messing around with that because it can crash the game. I've uh, I've basically disabled that in the BIOS settings on this. Um, so on this, if I do actually hold, I mean, you can see that's running sweet. If I hold the Z trigger and press both shoulder buttons, we should in a second see it come into a, there we go, a BIOS screen. And uh, well, this is basically the arcade test menu. So from here, you can you can change the, the difficulty of the game. Um, there you go, you can change the difficulty of the game, change how many laps it is. You can change whether you use a memory card or not. I've turned it off, obviously. You can disable the handicap, make it a bit harder in uh, multiplayer mode, but obviously multiplayer mode not really supported. Um, turn on the uh, track sound music. You can change the intensity of the force feedback. The force feedback does work on this as well. Uh, we'll just jump back into the game anyway. There we go. It's, it's a great game, Tony, honestly. And I'll tell you what, get a chance to play it on the, uh, the N64 and on the uh, GameCube. They're both brilliant games. Yeah, you can see the pace of move at, Dave. It's perfect. This picture, um, I'm only connected by composite. I do actually have the component cables for this, but I don't think it outputs uh, any kind of clearer image, really, with these games. 
Although if you do hack the Wii U, because the Wii U is hackable in exactly the same way, and you've got the HDMI connection, or you use a HDMI, a HDMI hack for this, it will output and upscale it appropriately for the best picture. But I'll be honest, I mean, it looks different on camera, but in person, um, the picture on this is, is bang on, you know. So that's F-Zero. I don't really need to show you the other Triforce games right now. At the end of the day, you've got the gist. You can see what's happening. So uh, I'm just going to kind of leave that in the background now. And now I'm going to talk you through exactly how we do it. So as standard, obviously, all of your all of your Wii's out there, they're, they're unmodded. You can't run copies. You can only run original discs. Can't do much more with them. Uh but what you can do now, and this is the time if you are actually going to follow this and try and do your own, this is the time now when you need to break out your equipment. Uh, you can watch this video back, of course, and you can have a look exactly how to do this in detail. But what you're going to need, first of all, you're going to need your Wii itself, obviously. You're going to need yourself uh, an SD card smaller than 2 gigabyte to put in the front and to install your uh, certain files on. You're going to need a uh, either a hard drive or a USB flash drive. Uh, they are now supported. It won't support all of them, but this is the cheapest 256 gigabyte uh, USB 3.0 memory stick on mymemory.co.uk, and it works an absolute treat. So, what you're going to do first of all is you're going to use a program. I'm going to switch between me and the screen quite a lot. You're going to need a program called Letterbomb um, if you've got an unmodded Wii. Now, what Letterbomb does, Letterbomb um, basically injects a certain amount of code onto your Wii uh, remotely, which allows it to uh, use the Hack Me hack and install the Homebrew channel, um, and which basically will allow you to then run any kind of Homebrew that you want on there at all. Um, using that you can run certain channels which will allow you to run backup discs through a soft mod uh, but obviously if you're going down this route you, you won't need to do that you can just go straight and install a USB loader so I'm going to switch to my PC now now what I'm very pleased about is that in recent years they've simplified the process a lot it's a lot easier than it used to be when I was doing um, when I was doing my uh, mod many years ago uh, and the first thing you want to do is you want to go to this site if you just scan towards the top you can probably see in the address bar there you might need to pause this video if you're watching it back and um, if you do a search in google for complete soft mod guide usb loaders it will take you to this and this is pretty much concise now so the first thing you're going to do, I'd say ignore the first method. The method you're going to want to use is the method that I'm using. And that is using a technique called letterbomb. Now what that does, you need to be on the latest uh, firmware version for the Wii. So you want to be on 4.3e if you're in the UK. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to go to this site, this site, pleasehackme.com. And if you go to that, it will look like this. Now, when you go there, what it will do is it'll ask you for your system menu version. And obviously you want to pick 4.3e or U if you've got an American one or J or whatever. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to need to look on your Wii. And if you go into your settings on your Wii, uh, there'll be an option there under network settings which will give you your MAC address. You need the MAC address for your system. So you need to be um, connected to the internet on your Wii through Wi-Fi. And obviously you'll need to be able to connect to a Wii uh, to the internet on your PC to be able to do this. And then what you do is you type in your MAC address on there. You click bundle the HackMe installer. Sort out the capture, and then you hit either of these, doesn't really matter. Cut the red wire, cut the blue wire, it does the same thing. Um, and then what it will do is it will download a file on your system called... I'll just find it. Um, oh, I've already 
it deletes that. It'll download a system called something like Newbie Package. Um, and then what it will also do is it will send a, um, it'll give you some files to copy onto your SD card. So you put your SD card in, put the files on there, put it back into your Wii. And then what you would do is you go, you'll see a little alert in the corner as though you've received an email or got a notification. If you click on that and go back a few days, I think I've already opened it, so yeah, I best not risk trying to open it again. There'll be a message there which is in red and it will look like the icon that I just showed on the screen, which is letter bomb. And then all you do is you open that and what it will do is it will install basically um, inject a bit of code and what it will do is it will read the information then off your SD card and when you go back to your uh, Wii menu, it'll ask you if you want to do it, you click yes and when you go back to your Wii menu you'll find that it's installed the homebrew channel for you. Once you've got the homebrew channel, installing everything else is a cinch. So once you've got your homebrew channel, there's a couple of things you want to do. You want to Go to this page of the soft mod guide, which is the custom iOS installation. Now, what this is, there's a couple of um, elements of the, the uh, operating system on your Wii that need to be updated to allow it to run certain types of code. And um, so without, without these custom iOS parts installed, backup loaders just won't launch and it'll keep resetting. So what you need to do is go to this and it'll give you the instructions on the page and it will say to download the NUS downloader, which I'll show you in a second. And then from the NUS downloader, you're gonna to need to download uh, these iOS WAD files. Now these are Wii package files that you need to install. So once you've downloaded that, you'll get this NUS downloader you follow the instructions on the page. Uh, you, type, you type in what it tells you to. So you go to database. You search the ones that it tells you to look for. I think it's iOS 56 and or 55 and 56 or 56 and 57. And basically, you you download those. You click the Packwad uh, checkbox here, and then what you'll do is it'll download a couple of files onto your system. And when you pull them out, those files will be there. And they'll be called, there you go, they'll look like that. And then inside you'll have, I don't know if I've copied them or taken them out. Yeah, I've taken them out. There'll be two WAD files in there and you'll need to copy those onto your SD card into the, uh, the apps folder. And then what you can do is you download a program like Multi WAD Manager, which was on my homebrew channel. back to it i'm not going to try and provide links for all these because at the end of the day you know how to use google at the end of the day and the programs you're going to need you can ignore most of the others but oops would help if i had the sd card plugged in one second <laughs> my bad <laughs> So you go to the homebrew channel and this time it should find the files now run a SD card install and we've got a few files here and uh, right so we've got a uh, multi mod manager that's what you're going to want to try and download if you download that uh, or you download you'll also need this as well the d2x custom iOS installer and when you go into that on your Wii, it will look a bit like this. Uh, you click OK, and then what you'll do is you'll, you'll there's a couple of settings here which I'm you can see me navigating up and down. Uh, you'll need to set these to a, to what it tells you on the instructions page on on that uh, website I showed you. I think it's something like fifty six and two 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 or something like two four nine and fifty seven and two fifty. 
and then you hit the A button to install them. I'm not going to do it again because I've already done it to my system. But you install those necessary WAD files on your system. Once you've done that, you can go back to your menu and then your menu, your uh, Wii system is then able to launch third party apps and, and USB loaders. So once you've done that, you can go back to your PC and you're going to need to Google for USB Loader GX. That's the program we're using to actually play the games. And you don't you need to download the USB Loader latest edition. And you also need to download the correct USB forwarder. Now what that is, is basically the channel. So USB loader itself will exist on your SD card, but then you need a channel on your Wii to be able to launch straight into that. So um, so if you want a window on your, on your Wii desktop like that, which actually shows USB loader, you'll need to install either, either of these WADs. If you've got the Wii, you need to download that one. If you've got the Wii U, you need to download that one. Copy those to your SD card. Go back to your Wii, and then using the multi-mod manager there, you can go into there and there's a, an app manager. And from there, you can find, you'll navigate down, find USB loader, and uh, you can either launch the game from there or you can choose to install it on your system. Um, so once you've done that, you'll you'll have everything you need. Uh, then you're going to need to have yourself uh, your USB drive, whether it be your hard drive or your flash drive. Yeah, then you need to gonna you need obviously you're gonna need to format your drive, uh, and ideally it needs to be formatted in FAT32. You can't use the NTFS file system with this. Uh, it won't matter that you can't copy files bigger than four gigabytes because uh, there's a little app on here that will allow you to copy that that stuff over. And I'm gonna quickly jump on here to show you what that looks like. So I'm just gonna quickly turn off my Wii. Plug this into here. And then we can start copying our games onto our hard drive or flash drive. Now, I've done this slightly different to how you're supposed to do it. And I've done it for a reason. You can see that it's asking me to format my disk. The reason is there's actually a third format you can use called WBFS. Now that format is exclusively for the Wii and uh, Windows won't recognise it. So it's doing that because what I've done is I've partitioned my disk and what I've actually done is I've got, um, you'll see there, USB drive F, that's what it was telling me was, was failing. And then I've got Wii FAT32 as G. What I've done is I've partitioned it and I've put all of my um, GameCube games into this partition. If I go into that, you'll see I can browse it like normal. And I go into games, and you'll see there that all of my GameCube games, and all of my uh, all of my GameCube games, all of my um, Triforce games, are in that folder. And when you when you copy them in, you need to copy them in by their game name like that, and then inside your ISO game, your ISO file needs to be renamed as game, and that's for each and every single game. So have got a top level there for Crazy Taxi, call it Crazy Taxi, and then inside the ISO itself is just called game.iso. And you'll need to do that if you want it to launch through Nintendo, and so I'll go into that in just a sec. Um, now, for managing your Wii games, you're going to need another program called... Wii Backup Manager, and I've got that installed on here, and then if I double click this and go into it, this will recognise my WBFS 
partition. Now, uh, you don't have to do it that way. I've done it that way because it made more sense for me. But if I then pick as my first drive, if I pick F, you can see it's recognised my F drive. It's recognised it as a WBFS partition. And in the second, once it's scanned it, it will show you all the Wii titles that I've got installed on there. There we go, so you can see GoldenEye, ABBA, Big Brain Academy, Bomberman Land, Carnival Games, Cooking Mama. And from there, you can actually, you can retitle the, the header of the disc so it displays properly on your screen when it copies over. Uh, you can do things like uh, region hacks. It tells you the size of the game there. And if you want to add a game, what you would do is you would go to Files, you would click Add, you would look for you through your files, and then you would browse to where your uh, you would browse to where your Wii games are like this. I'll just quickly show you for the sake of it. I've already got these added in, but double click it. W click the WBFS or ISO file. Doesn't really matter which format you download them in or rip them in. Uh, it will recognise both, and then you'll see it will automatically download the artwork on here just to show you that you've got the right game. Then you'd click the checkbox, click transfer, and then we'd have it transfer to the drive that I want it to transfer to. Obviously, I've already got Bombman Landwee on there, but I don't need to do that. But what that would do is that would then start transferring that file, and if it was an ISO, it would convert it into a WBFS file, and then it would save that game on here. If the game were bigger than 4 gigabytes, because obviously FAT32 and WBFS can't actually recognise files for bigger than four gigabytes or can't have files transferred to it bigger than that. Um, what it will actually do is it will split those files automatically for you um, and you'll have like two files that actually physically exist on the disk, but it will handle it in exactly the right way when you actually go to the browser on here, so don't worry about that. Um, so you can see all the, all the games there are listed. So. I've got about 70, I mean, this is a 256 gigabyte drive I've got here. And the way I split it, I've got 180 gigabytes allocated for Wii games. And the rest I've got allocated for GameCube games. That is plenty. When you actually think about the, the playable games on the Wii, I struggled past about 40 or so to think of games that I really wanted to put on here. I owned a massive chunk of these myself anyway, and the rest I've just kind of put on for filler. Um... But there's a few things I put on there for events like uh, Toko Drum Master. That was a Japanese only drumming game, which some of you might have played on the arcade. If you've been to Arcade Club, you've certainly played it. Well, there were five games for the Wii, and when I take that to comic conventions and that, they absolutely love it. And this is probably one of the only games, ways you can really play it in the UK. So, you know, I've added those in there. But so I've got my, my arcade shooters there. Like House of the Dead, but I've got more, you know, the games that have got a bit more depth, like Twilight Princess, uh, Trauma Center, great little puzzle action game, party games like WarioWare and Mario Party, all loaded on there. And then once you've done that, you can take your drive out, you can put it back into your Wii, and it's ready to go. Now, the, the final thing you want to do, obviously, if you're um, wanting to run GameCube games as well, is you'll need to obviously to have either a FAT32 partition like I've done here, or if the entire drive is formatted in FAT32, all of your Wii games will need to go into a folder, the folder called WBFS, and then your GameCube games will need to go into a folder simply called Games, as you see there. Um, now, in order to get GameCube games running, you're going to need, like I say, a program called uh, Nintendo. You can download that straight from SourceForge, I think, or um, or Google Drive or something. Like GitHub, there we go. Uh, talks about it there. It talks about it in the soft mod guide that I was just talking about. So there's a link within that soft mod guide to be able to download Nintendo. You will need that. You copy it over onto your SD card. And then if you go into your home your um, uh, homebrew channel on your Wii once you've installed it, you'll be able to then click on uh, Nintendo, set it all up and configure it how you want. 
and then you just go to a couple of options within uh, Wii USB Loaded GX and that will enable you to play GameCube games on there. So I'm just going to go eject that now and talk you through a couple of these. The GameCube games should work on the Wii as well, Kevin, from what I've been reading. Sorry, I, I don't have a Wii U. But from what I've been reading, the GameCube games should also work on the Wii U. Yeah, I know, there's a new Taiko Drum Master coming out. Not a big fan of Klonoa myself, Jeremy, I'll be honest. That's why it's not on there. I've got, like I said, I've got mostly stuff here I'd, I'd like to put on at events. but um, I've got Metro Prime 1 and 2, but not Trilogy. Yeah, again, the Metro games, not a massive fan of, Kev. I've kind of come to a compromise in terms of the games that are on there. Obviously, your your mileage may vary as to the type of games that you enjoy playing, but I've had to sacrifice some of the top titles for the sake of putting titles on there that I'm going to use for events, you know what I mean? This is one of the sacrifices I make for you guys to be able to play all kinds of weird shit at events. Don't ever get scared by these sites, Jeremy. These, these sites have existed for a, 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 quite a few years. The uh, soft mod site now is pretty concise as well. Geometry Wars I did actually have on this list, but I removed it because I had to make it bail for something else. I'm still going to shuffle around with this um, and probably install some more games that I really like on here. Um, there's there's a couple of pieces of filler on here, but if I'm honest, I'm, I'm trying to keep this one fully legit, and that means trying to do it with games that I actually own myself, if you know what I mean. Because that way I can ensure I'm getting clean rips. If you start downloading stuff from the internet, that there's always caveats. And the caveats are, you're going to get somebody else's dump. It might not be clean. Uh, it might have parts removed from it. You know, it's not always going to be superb. Whereas if you do your own rips straight from disc, they tend to be a lot better. So, when you load back up into USB Loader GX, if you go into the settings here, there's a few things you can do. Uh, if you go into GUI settings, from here you can change the way certain things are displayed, um, change the language, not that you're going to want to, change the, uh, if the game region's displayed, uh, you know, change the size of the clock, things like that. You can change the game window to look like a rotating disc or be more like a channel banner. Uh, I like the rotating disc. Uh, there's a widescreen fix to make slightly clearer text on here. All kinds of things you can do. Uh, you can change how long before a screensaver kicks in. You know, it, all the usual. But you can play around with that once you get it. None of it's essential. Uh, with the loader itself, you can do things like I was talking about. You can patch certain regions. So if you've got certain games that won't play, you can apply region patches and they will play just fine on 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Most of the games now with the latest mod and the latest hacks play perfectly just with region patch turned on you don't need all the other patches that are on here uh, you can change the aspect ratio between four to three uh, and this ocean i'm a big fan of jeremy big fan uh, and then you obviously you can have default here to turn the ocarina cheats on or off um, the hard drive settings this is what you need might need to play around with depending on your system you should really have your USB device plugged into the uh, USB port closest to the edge of your console. So as I'm laying it flat on its feet here on, on its base, uh, that's the one at the bottom. You can use either port, but apparently some Wii's, uh, depending on when they were made, don't like you using both ports. I don't know whether it's to do with the, the amount of voltage it allows you to carry through it or what, but... Uh, you can set it to naught, or you can set it to one, or you can set it to both. I tend to leave it on just naught, because that way it won't scan the second port. And I'm only ever going to use one drive, which I've got plugged into there. You can, if you want, have separate USB drives for your GameCube games and your uh, Wii games. Uh, you can pick what partition you want it to load. At the moment, it's loading the FAT32 drive for the uh, GameCube games. And also BFS, I've got multiple partitions turned on. It's recognising the WBFS files from the WV, WBFS formatted partition. Um, and then obviously you can you can change the way it splits the game here. You can split into equal parts of 2 gigabyte or, or just 4 gigabytes, and then some change. 
<clears throat> nice one, Jeremy. So, you know, there's a few things you might need to play around with there. In features, um, you can change whether your wheel, because like obviously this USB drive that I've got has actually got an indicator light which tells you when it's being accessed. Not a lot of USB drives do. So what you can do is you can, you can turn on wheel light and it will actually flick out the wheel light on the front when it's accessing the disc. That's a good way of indicating if it's accessing the data that it needs to while it's loading, in case you think it's hanging. Uh, you can do some other things there. You don't really need to mess with it. I like to turn things like rumble and stuff on. If we go across, we've got a few more things. You can change. You can create your own custom animations for your menu. So you can, a bit like with your phones, you can change the way your pages scroll, that the, uh, the games scroll on screen, how big that image is. Uh, you can have your custom background music. You can have custom sounds for clicking and things like that. You can adjust your parental control from here. Uh, custom paths. Now, you might need to mess with this. Uh, you shouldn't need to, to mess with the artwork paths. They will all default where they need to be. Uh, all the cheat codes. What you might need to adjust, however, is you'll see there it says main GameCube path. Now, what that is, that is where you're telling your system to look for GameCube games because obviously that's not standard like it is with the Wii games so you may need to just click on that and check the address and make sure it's going to the right place uh, the right folder to search for your GameCube games and then the same with um, SD GameCube path you can launch GameCube uh, games from your SD card if you want to I wouldn't recommend it because it reads the SD card too slow um, but what you will want to do is make sure that the path here for the Nintendo application is set to the correct folder on your SD card. If you don't have that, it won't even recognize your, your GameCube games that you've got ripped and it certainly won't load them. So you need to make sure that, that category is filled in correctly. I'm not gonna give you an idiot guide to it because you know how to kind of browse and find folders and things like that. Uh, a couple of other things you can, well, used to be able to do there are actually different themes you can download to change the way the whole menu looks, to put it in different colours and have different wallpapers and things. Unfortunately, um, you can't actually access the site no more directly on here. Now, you could about a week ago, so that has only just recently shut down, but you can go to this site and download themes. I've got a couple of themes downloaded uh, from when I used to have this. I'm going to reapply it at some point. As long as you've got the files on your sd card if you go to theme menu oh there we go you can actually set a different theme menu and apply it to your system let's see if it works yeah see how it's changed my cursor now to be in black if i go back to my main there you go instead of having a white background this is this was the background i used to have before I do quite like it, although you can't read the text very clear at the bottom. I think I'm going to enlarge the text. I'll do that on the menu. But, uh, yeah, I quite like this dark theme. So you can change your themes and do all kinds of funky things from there. And you'll see that at the bottom, the buttons have changed position. Makes it a bit friendlier on the eyes and just a full white background. I'm um, just seeing what other features we've got here we can, we can mess around with. Custom pass, theme menu update if there is any updates to usb g lo usb loader gx if you just hit the update button and you're connected to the network it'll initialize the network now it'll check and it'll see if there's any new versions of uh, usb loader which obviously it says there no new updates so that's fine you can refer to ref uh, revert to default if you want to but i've got it set up the way i want so i'm not going to do that uh, when you get here, like I say, you can change the way it displays uh, if you prefer something like this. That does look quite nice, actually. I might leave that on for a bit. Uh, then, like I say, if you press button 1 on here, you can download cover art. There's 3D covers, there's 2D covers, there's full covers if you have a certain display on. Um, you, if you go click on a game, you can also do things like download cheat files. So if I go to a game where I haven't downloaded any yet, we'll go to, uh, here we go, Carnival Games. If I hit settings there and click on Ocarina, it will say there's no cheat file found. If you hit download now, 
it'll connect to their network and download a cheat file. And then you can see here, it's not really clear on the camera, but there you can have it default. So everybody gets 999 coins, 999 points. Uh, and then you just hit create and it'll create a cheat file for that. And then when you go to game load, there's an option there that says Ocarina, you just turn that to on. And then when you load the game, it'll load the game with cheats. I'll just see actually if I can load a game with cheats and just show you that. Um, let's find a game like Excite Truck. So if I hit settings and I go to Ocarina, I've already downloaded the, uh, I've already downloaded the, the cheat file for this. And what I'll do is I will set time to zero. So I can't run out of time. Turbo power at maximum, speed boost at maximum and infinite turbo if i click create it will create a temporary cheat file we go back we go to game load we turn ocarina on hit save and now when i load the game it will load the game with the cheats that i've selected Well, it should do anyway. We'll see when we get into the game. Yes, I need to copy. I need to copy my save file back over. <laughs> I've got. I've actually completed this and got everything open. So I'll. Uh, I'll copy my save file back over in a minute. Oh, it's gonna make me do this for a little race. See, I'm turboing even though I shouldn't be. My temperature gauge should be going through the roof because I'm using my turbo and it's not. So the cheats are obviously working. Yes, it was, Jeremy. Yeah, Excite Truck. This was released over here. I've got this. I've actually got this upstairs. Brilliant game. So anyway, that's, uh, that's just showing you how that works. So. Anyway, so that is the Nintendo Wii. Um, anybody who's just kind of getting back into their Wii or never had a Wii or have always taken the piss out of the Wii, um, I suggest, if, you, if I just scan through my list here, you take a look at a few of the games and I'll tell you the kind of games you want to be getting for this system because there's a lot of brilliant Wii games. Some of them you might have seen on other systems, some of them are which are unique. So going from the start... Um, We've got um, the Wii version of GoldenEye, obviously a graphically upgraded version of the Nintendo 64 Classic, and it's really good in multiplayer. Uh, if you like your rhythm games, there's loads of dancing games and stuff like that. We've got ports of DS games at the time, like Big Brain Academy, multiplayer games like Bomberman. Carnival games is a really good party game if you've got some people around. You do things like the uh, the ring toss and... You know, all the all the daft shit you get at the fairground. Uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns, brilliant platformer. And I believe that's four player on here, which is pretty cool. Donkey Kong Jet Race, not quite as good as Diddy Kong Racing, but um, still a decent game. Uh, Endless Ocean, that's a really weird exploration game that you play using the Wii Remote. And it's, it's quite a cool game where you're swimming around under the sea. Uh, Excite Truck we just covered, That's a, that is a good racing game. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Echoes of Time, pretty good strategy based RPG. Uh, Ghost Squad, that's a direct port of the Sega arcade shooter, that is good for a laugh. Uh, the Ghostbusters video game, not graphically as good as the Xbox 360 or PS3 version, but still very playable. And even with a slightly more cartoony style, really, really good game. Uh, if you like survival horror, I'd say give The Grudge a check out. Play it on the dark, turn the sound up, you'll shit your pants. Um, you've got the Lego games on here. Obviously, if you've got kids or you just enjoy a bit of a kind of casual adventure, those are really good to play. Uh, there's a lot more available than that. Those are just the two that I, I favour. The Olympic Games, uh, Mario and Sonic. It's like dogs and cats living together. We never would have seen that back in my day. 
Well, uh, those games are good for party games, but there are better sports games for the Wii available. Mario Kart Wii is a fantastic Mario Kart game. It's got most of the tracks from the previous games on there. Uh, it handles really well, and it's great in multiplayer. Can't play it online in multiplayer anymore, sadly. But to be honest, with that many cheaters, it wasn't worth it anyway. Uh, the Sonic games, I absolutely hate them on this system, mate. Sorry, but I've not got them on here. Cannot stand them at the, the later Sonic games. Mario Party 8 and 9 are on here, and those are both really good party games. Uh, there are Wii ports of these games here, like Mario Smash Tennis and uh, Smash Football. Um, NBA Jam, that is a really good updated version of the game with the updated roster. I think from 2009, it plays just like the arcade original. Uh, really cool game. New Super Mario Bros. Wii, that is one of my favourite ever Mario games. I still maintain that Mario was always better in 2D. And New Super Mario Bros. Wii in four player. A four player side scrolling Mario game, it's just a good laugh all round. No More Heroes, now that is a really cool kind of uh, adventure hack and slash them up quite gory as well uh, if you can get the ntsc version and patch it to patch it to pal like i've done uh, there's a there's a lot of edited out of the pal version in terms of the gore and the blood and that restores it so do that um punch out oh the, the, the we punch out is a, is a, a brilliant sequel to the uh the NES and SNES originals, so definitely get that game. Red Steel, it's kind of a mediocre first-person... Well, say first-person shooter. You've actually yeah, done a sword in that one, which is quite strange. The Resident Evil Chronicles games, they first came on this system because uh, Resident Evil 5 was never released for this system like it was for the uh, the other two powerful consoles. Uh, so they've got the Chronicles games instead for this, which are... Online rail shooters where you go through the typical Resident Evil games, they are really good games to play uh, and they've got quite a lot of replay value as well. And of course on the Wii they released uh, Resident Evil Archives. You've got an updated version of the Resident Evil 1 remake that they did for the GameCube and Resident Evil Zero. That is a fantastic game. If you've played the other Resident Evils, check out Zero. Uh, not having a box system on that creates a whole new challenge. I've got the GameCube versions of 2 and 3 there. Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition, I would say, is the definitive version of Resident Evil 4. Not only can you aim with the Wii Remote, which makes things slightly easier and a lot more accurate. Uh, there's a few more weapons available on there. Um, there's a lot more stuff to unlock. It's just a really, really good game. And the best way to play Resident Evil 4, in my opinion. Uh, Samba de Amigo, always good for party games. Not actually played this Silent Hill, but uh, I've put it on there because I really want to start playing through the Silent Hill series soon, something I've never really got a chance to do. Uh, alternative to Mario Kart there, we've got Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Um, Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, they are must-haves for the system. Probably the best two games for the system. Um, I've not played through them myself, I'll be honest, but... Uh, yeah, everyone tells me that they are superb, you know, 3D World Mario games. And um, definitely the two games you, you want to have if you've got this. Monkey Ball's good fun on here. Obviously, you can use the tilt sensor gyro within the Wii Remote to play. So that makes it, you know, really, really cool experience and really accurate as well. Uh, Super Paper Mario. Uh, I haven't got Smash Brothers Brawl on here at the moment, but I will install it soon. It takes up nearly 10 gigabyte, which is probably why I've left it out, but Melee was a better game anyway, so I've put Melee on here from the GameCube. Uh, Taiko no Tatsujin, I've got all five games on here. You're about to see a version of this on the PS4, which will be the first official Western release, uh, be the first release in the UK for the game at all. The only other Western release of this game was a PS2 version of this game, which had Western songs on, uh, but it only came out in America a few years ago. So um, this is really the best way to play it because it's crazy in Japanese and everybody loves it. Uh, House of the Dead Overkill, another good rail shooter. Unnecessary amounts of swearing and violence, but a really cool successor. House of the Dead 2 and 3 Returns. Again, can't go wrong with House of the Dead. Zelda Twilight Princess, superb game for this. And I want to give a mention to Wind Waker. One of the few 3D environment uh, Zelda games that I do like. 
mainly because I like the kind of cell shaded art style. So I've put that on here. Uh, Time Splitters is probably the best of FPSs that uh, the GameCube ever got. Um, Beautiful Joe, that is a really strange kind of side scrolling beat em up. Uh, three of those for the GameCube, worth checking out if you get a chance. I've got WarioWare on here for the Wii. Uh, this is Monsters Blast. Not many people have heard of this, but Wicked Monsters Blast is basically the closest thing you can get to Point Blank. Remember Point Blank on the PS1? Uh, on the Wii, and it plays an absolute treat on here. So definitely check that out if you get a chance. Uh, and I think that's four player on here, so really cool when you're all shooting the screen together. Uh, the Wii Fit, there's actually some quite cool mini good mini games with the Wii Balance board. So worth checking out if you get hold of one. Wii Party, there's a, there's a brilliant um, board game on there, which is the reason I've got this on here, uh, where you play mini games and it's very much like Mario Party, but you use your, your me characters. And uh, it's a faster game, a lot more fun than playing Mario Party sometimes. Wii plays just a lot of good mini games for parties. Wii Sports, you cannot fault Wii Sports. It's the best selling game ever for a reason. I know it got bundled with Wii's back in the day, but even in Japan where it wasn't bundled with the Wii, this was lapped up because it is a superb game. The bowling, you know, all the games in there, the bowling, the tennis um, and the golf, they're, they're all really good multiplayer games. And if you want to top that, go to Wii Sports Resort because if you've got the Motion Plus controller, that goes on the bottom of your controller there. I do have a set of those. I just haven't got it plugged in at the moment. Uh, there's some brilliant games on there. There's a lot more sports available like archery, uh, jet skiing, there's a plane flyby, and skydiving. Really, really cool game and even better than Wii Sports, I'll say. And then, of course, obviously, if you're going to do this installation... I recommend that you get the Triforce games on here because they're, they're a must-have now as far as I'm concerned. And probably the only way you're going to be able to play it um, if effectively and in, at full speed. I don't know if burning them to a disc and playing them on a GameCube is easy or not. I've not tried it. But um, personally, I think this is the way to go because you've got them all in one place. You're not going to have any problems with read times and uh, it's just the way to go. Um, but you have to create your own little nice... Uh, ping files like I've done here uh, if you want a no nice graphical front for them because otherwise they'll just show up as bare folders <clears throat> so yeah Thrillville is quite good I, I did give that a, a, a crack Jeremy yeah. how did Charles Martinet sign yours Kev that's really cool man uh, we have actually debated getting Charles Martinet over free events but it's uh, kind of pricey we'll have to see what happens yeah. Color Impact. Oh, Marble Madness. I don't know if I don't think Marble Madness was on this. There's a game like it though. Um There you go, eighty Wii games. See Kev with a two fifty six gigabyte drive, you'd fit all of those on there. No more heroes two I will download at some point. So anyway guys, that um my Wii anyway. Um been a very long video today and I apologise for that but everybody was really wanting to see you know what's gone on with the Wii system and Wii soft modding in recent years um, and uh, you know it's come on a long way and I'm really pleased now to see that the Triforce arcade games are on there and hopefully I know I, I only kind of skimmed over it um, but if I went and did every action myself A I'd need um, a brand new Wii here to be able to do that and I don't have one um, I did go through every single step that I showed you there myself on my friend's Wii the other day. Excuse me. Uh, and I successfully did exactly the same as I've done on my own modded Wii. So it's very easy to do. So if you, if you want to play back the video and go through that part, you know, pause on the screen, see what I was looking at, see what I was downloading. Very easy to do. Like I say, you just need to download. You need to sort out the letter bomb first of all to soft mod your Wii for the homebrew channel you need to uh, format your fat32 usb drive uh, you need to download usb loader gx and nintendo and then you just need to either rip your games directly to it or uh, use w the use the wii backup room manager copy your wii games on copy your gamecube games on and plug it all in and you've got everything there on there for you a much better way to do it 
I definitely recommend you try it, Jeremy. Honestly, it's worth doing to preserve your collection, and that way, if you ever do lose games or you um, your discs get wrecked or whatever reason, it's a much more efficient way to store your games. You have purchased them, so you're perfectly legal to do it anyway. And um, I hope you've all found this uh, educational. I, I, I know, like my streams are not like these silly gamer streams, these Twitch style streams you see from everybody else, but. I'm really into my retro and I like to be able to communicate to you just how much I am and how much I kind of, you know, how much time I spend like looking into these things and finding out these things to try and make my retro collection just that whole next level of awesome, you know. Um, and doing things like this just makes playing these games, owning these games and being able to share these games with people uh, a lot better. And uh, I want to thank you all for watching these anyway. And if you do manage to get your Wii systems done, um, post me a picture or something in the comments, you know, show me some uh, show me some love, show me that I've helped someone out there anyway. Uh, but if you do get stuck, give me a shout and I'll see if I can help you out. Uh, a couple of people have already asked me if I can help them out with something else. I've got another video like this coming up very soon, uh, covering another one of the sixth generation, you know, I covered the, the Dreamcast not long ago. And uh, the next one I'm going to be covering in one of my next videos is the good old PS2 and uh, I'm going to be showing you uh, how things have changed for this and how you can improve your setup for this infinitely even from the last time I looked at them so um, we'll be going into that and I'll be showing you what it's like to uh, bring your PS2 into the uh, into the 2010s and uh, should be pretty cool anyway but um, yeah enjoy the rest of your evening guys leave me any comments you've got if you look so if you need any help ask me a question i'll see where we go uh i'll be doing some more videos with aaron very soon probably with mike as well uh we've got a we've got an event coming up this weekend i know a lot of you are probably off up to blackpool for one event but i'm off over to uh sheffield because uh, i'm doing the gaming at a, a new smaller gaming event by the guys who run yorkshire cosplay con and we're hosting the retro gaming there so you might see a few of the things i've covered recently there if you do want to pop along and say hello and show some support to them. Um, but either way, we've got Revival um, Zapped next month on the 24th and 25th of November. And I really hope you guys come along, have a pint with us, you know, come buy some bargains. Just enjoy a pre-Christmas game with some like-minded people. And uh, meet some of the Commodore bods who are going to be there. Um, and uh, see some of this cool stuff that I've been doing recently anyway. But yeah, enjoy the rest of the evening, guys. I'll be back in a few days in the next stream. See you later.